Hello and welcome back to the Now We Know Show, the show where we discuss a topic of interest and by the end we will have learnt something new and hopefully you will too. I'm Zach. I'm Buzz. And I'm Jack. And this week we are doing our part two. Oh yes. Part one last week, the House on the Hill Toy Museum. Part two, Mount Fidget Anglo-Saxon Castle. Hey! If you enjoy the Now We Know Show podcast, support Zach World Productions on Patreon or join our members on YouTube for early access, ad-free content and exclusive episodes. Okay, so as a little recap, mm-hmm. we went out and did a podcast and we did it in two segments. We went to visit the House on the Hill Toy Museum, which was last week's podcast. So yep. if you haven't listened to that, go and listen to it. It was great. It's very much the part one of that the part of one. The time. Yes, because it was the same trip, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, obviously we went to just go and see the House on the Hill Toy Museum, but when we arrived, we found we had to... Do buy, the whole package. Basically yeah. get the whole package, yeah. Get the whole package. So we got the bonus of going uh, around Mount Fidget Castle. I'm glad we did. Yes. I, I'm really, yeah, I'm really, I wasn't looking to do that, mm. but I'm glad we did. So first question is... What is Mount Fidget Castle? Well, Mount Fidget Castle is an Anglo-Saxon castle, which is uh, it's a reconstruction. Mm-hmm. But it's great. So a little bit of history on that. Okay, It is believed to have been an early Iron Age fort and uh, Roman Saxon Viking settlement. Artifacts found on the site uh, from these periods have supported that. And then in 1066, the site was attacked by the Normans and Robert Gernon, or Gernon, uh, the Duke of Boulogne, built his castle at Mount Fidget, making uh, it his chief seat and the head of his barony. Oh, that's a point. Cause yes, didn't yes. we see uh, like a reconstruction of that? Yeah. Big um, banquet table. And there, mannequins, there is yeah. some evidence that Robert Gernon uh, was a close relative to William the Conqueror. And that Robert Geron, or Robert Gerno, as is referred to in the Doomsday Book, came over from France with William the Conqueror and was rewarded with his lordship and several others in the county. The male line of the Geron family continued for only five generations. The time of Robert Geron's death is unknown. William, his son and heir, dropped the name and took the name of Mount Fidget which was used thereafter by the descendants. Uh Uh-huh. So So there we are. So then it became known as Mount Fidget Castle. Nice. So we entered Mount Fidget Castle kind of through the back, didn't we? (laughs) That's what (laughs) we put Because there's the main entrance. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Because normally that would probably be the thing that you visit first, as opposed to the toy museum. You you go in the main entrance, which is like... When you go to any um, castle... cathedral places like that yeah. you usually go through where you pay to enter if it's a pay to enter place and they always sort of kind of steer you around to leave through the gift shop mm. so that's kind of the setup you, you go to the entrance yeah. you pay for your tickets and you go through the gift shop to get there and you come back through the gift shop yeah um, but that's where we went to the toy museum and when we went there before when you were a little kid yeah you had to come back down the hill right but they've now got a new entrance so mm. that you can get into the castle from the toy museum. Which is, if you listen to the first episode, where the dinosaur would squirt you. <laughs> it's basically, you'd have to avoid the squirting yes. in order to get into if, the... If you haven't listened to that, we really do recommend it. Avoid, yeah. avoid the squirting in order to gain entrance yes. to, the, yes. to good, the castle. Good, good, you, you great. Don't, you good don't want to get us soaking from the stegosaurus. Anyway, anyway <laughs> so enough about dinosaurs. We found a back entrance. Yes. And we went in there. Now, there was immediately a section that wasn't there before. And what was that? Well, that was that kind of indoors place. Oh, uh, the, yes. Yeah, there was like a... It was a, almost, a mine? It was yes. almost similar a to mine? the... A mine? And they call it a mine? It was almost similar to the haunted house in the toy museum to, a, yes. to an extent where you yeah. could kind mm. of walk around in the dark. A bit and, more informative and yeah. less yeah. jump scary. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was a kind of a wooden, wooden building with uh, very small passageways through it. Yes. And then you could have these window areas you could look through yeah. into... Um, it's well, very it's very dim lighting, mm, yeah. which we do have footage of as well. And yeah. it had uh, it had descriptive audio telling you what what, yeah. what was going on. Yeah, there was one point where there was like a 
bars across the floor and there was a mannequin at the bottom like that was towards the end of it towards yes. the end that was quite cool looking up your skirt I'll, yeah. I'll definitely have well, to I wasn't wearing I'll, squirts I'll put that clip <laughs> <The> up <squirts. laughs> you're not wearing Sorry. a squirt I'm a bit ahead of myself <laughs> I think you was meant to be a miner now the mines all anyway around. I'm going to put that clip up now <laughs> okay within a thousand years experience the more sinister side of castle life <laughs> On your left, you will see the miners tunneling for coal and other minerals. A dark and dangerous job in which many lost their lives when the tunnels collapsed, burying them alive. During the times of siege, the miners were used by the Baron to tunnel under and undermine the walls of the castles, bringing the ramparts crashing down and allowing their packing armies to storm inside. of the Black Death victims' graveyard, which swept across medieval Britain, killing 60% of the population, carried by legal infested rats, which still lurk in Okay, so that 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 was good because that wasn't there before. So we no. had a good old wander around that. Um, yeah, it was kind of that's kind of our like first an offshoot year. from like a, a river. It kind of led down to like a big wheel. It had, it had a water wheel. Oh, yeah. really? And a Duncan nice. stall. Duncan stall, yeah, for, for those witches, yeah. just to see if they weigh the same as a duck. And talking <laughs> about <laughs> ducks... Turn me into a newt. <laughs> talking about ducks, there yeah. was a lot of wildlife there, which was really I nice. think that's one of the things that I love about Mount Fidget Castle, because what you've to, to put it into perspective, to try and describe it to, to the listeners, is that it is on a hill, hmm. and... Uh, it's a palisaded, wooden palisade. So you've got this wooden palisade around enc- enc- encompassing the whole of the, the, the castle. But the yeah. castle itself inside isn't like you'd imagine a Norman castle, you know, a stone castle. Mm. It's made up of lots of different areas. So you've got the blacksmiths, you've got the the um, yeah, farriers. Yeah, it's very representative you, but, of but the you, time. You've also got this area, which we'll, we'll go through it all, but you've got the area where you've got the... Um, uh, the baron himself and he's got, yes, got his, his kind of mead hall his almost. mead hall yeah. uh, and his residence um, and so when we came in through that back entrance in there and past that interact, interactive building you ended up coming sort of like into the back of the castle compound yeah yeah and uh, we were it's kind of like the main village area yeah but the great thing is it, because it's been built over the years and, and they've obviously extended it over the years um, it is just I mean it's literally like Walking onto a film set, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, you, know you go to a lot of ruined castles, stone mm. castles, and you, and then they're great, and there's some fantastic castles that are still in really good condition throughout the UK. But um, this one, it's just, it just has that atmosphere, doesn't mm. it? Yeah, it's Definitely. very, very and, immersive, and, especially with the animals going the, around. Yeah, that's what mm. I was getting to. You've got all these animals walking around. The first mm. thing that came trotting up with all the goats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the <laughs> Where suddenly Zach started running away. Oh yeah, I started running away because when I first the PTSD went, kicks <laughs> when I first went to Mount Fitchett Castle when I was very, very young, very, very young. I did have an encounter with, with a goat, goat. Yeah. and that, it tried to swallow my arm. Yeah. Well, it was actually quite funny. The uh, you can when you're there, if you so if you're taking your children there, you can actually buy food. Yeah, mm. bags of, of feed to feed to the animals. I think yeah. they did offer us one, didn't they, at the entrance? They did, yeah. but I, I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> he learned from last time, yeah. So anyway, so when we were there last time, we, we bought you some animal feed. Yeah. And uh, I went, 
we came out of the castle palisade at the front and, and the big slope going down to the um, to the gift shop, there's mm. ben- there was benches and we were sitting on a bench and there's a, I remember this white goat that was further down the hill mm. and you said, can I go and feed the goat? So mm. <laughs> Zach went off to feed the goat and uh, me and Tina were just chat- chatting and then we noticed that Zach's waving at us. <laughs> so we were, oh, he's having fun down there, he's waving at us. So we're just sitting there waving back at him and he's, and he's more frantic, <laughs> waving and waving. And then it was the sudden realisation that what happened is he'd been feeding the goat, so t- putting his hand in the bag, giving it some food, and then it just said, well, I'm not having this, I'll just have the bag. But it, w- it went straight to the bag and your hand. And my hand. And it was chomping his whole arm down, down his throat. <laughs> yeah. So actually what he was doing, he was waving frantically while with one arm, while the other like, arm was... Frantically being... in disbelief that I'm being <laughs> swallowed by like a goat. goat. And it was like, some realisation, and then Dad comes running down there to extract his arm from this goat. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it yeah, left you traumatised. Yeah. So, yeah. That, so I, I have a very love-hate relationship with, with goats. goats. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> hate. Yeah, so they taste nicer. It's um, true. And, that's uh, the love part. <laughs> so when we got in there, that was typical. The, all the goats came trotting up to meet you. Didn't they? Yes, <laughs> yes. Got okay, just ha- hands raised above the head. <laughs> yeah, Don't I want have, any trouble here. I have no food. Yeah, <laughs> please go away. Um, oh, but they got yeah. deer. They got the rabbits. Yeah, that was nice seeing the deer because yeah. I'd not. I can't remember that from the first time I went. Yeah, they've got deer that are walking around in there. And, and the peacocks. The peacocks. peacocks. There was yeah, peacocks. there was this one kid who was kind of picking up all the peacock feathers. Peacock. And, yeah. Do you remember that? He was kind of like putting them in his backpack. Yeah, he was wandering around. He, he was there quite some time because obviously yeah. you could just recognise the same kid with all these peacock feathers sticking out of his backpack. But yeah, I hope he'd been picking them up and he hadn't been plucking the oh, peacock. Yeah, they have got that. We've been, it's been a year for peacocks. Yeah. All, all this summer. We, have, we keep yeah, bumping we go into to, peacocks. There's peacocks. We went to do uh, a job with it at the house. There's a peacock sitting on the roof of the yeah, house. Yeah, I was driving, um, you know, uh, um, we went to the services the other day. Yeah. Uh, along that road from like, heading towards it, uh-huh. a peacock ran across the road in front uh-huh. of me. And I was like, yeah. huh. There's another peacock. Another and then, peacock. then we're going places and hear, hear them in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of peacocks in the UK, or at least where we live. And the Mount Finchy Castle. And the Mount Finchy Castle. And anyway, so we do a peacock podcast. Yeah, so. Do we have any peacock specialists? Yeah, we, we need a peacock specialist. So uh, anyway, so we're in in the compound of the uh, of the castle, and uh, we were kept, where we came in. They had a big rabbit warren. Did you notice that? Not so much. No? Oh, right. Well, that was one of the things that uh, I was fascinated in because they've got the, this huge rabbit warren mm-hmm. at the back of the castle. So where you went up and they had the cow sheds. And, uh, oh, right. Yeah. I think they, had a, okay. uh, they had a timber part where they were a, 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 a log cutting pit the saw where somebody was in the pit and yeah, the yeah. saw going up and yeah, down. We've got some funny pictures of that. And, they, uh, and, and you've got a big... Um, Rabbit warren, as I say, because that was one of the things you would do is you when you had a settlement, hmm. you would have a rabbit warren within the palace. And why would that be? Because obviously rabbits breed very quickly, so you've got uh, and, uh, an immediate supply of food. food. Okay, um, but uh, agriculture. Yeah, yeah, no, but it means so you've got food on tap. So you, rabbits, you can just let them run around, do their own thing. And when you want a rabbit, you can take a rabbit. But, num, num. but what I will say about rabbits is you can. There is a thing called rabbit starvation. Where you can actually die from eating rabbits. Mm. When it used to be a thing, not a thing these days. I don't think this particularly comes up. But I mean, nobody really eats rabbits nowadays. Can die from eating rabbits. Yes. Yes. So do they carry some kind of? No, no, no. 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 It's because uh, it was well documented at the time when the pioneers were in America, where where um, you know people were trying to find the way across. America and mm. strike there and you've got the old mountain men trying to find their way out and, and they'd find them with their journals where they'd written the journals and they were dead and they were, in the journals it would say that they, they, they were starving to death yet in their journals they said there was a fantastic supply of rabbit mm. and they couldn't understand why well, uh, put it simply that rabbit starvation is that rabbit is a very very lean meat Right. Uh, hardly any fat. So it doesn't have so much. it's just protein. Right. And what they were doing is because they didn't have a very good understanding of what vegetation you could eat, mm. they were literally just eating rabbits and starving themselves of fat, starving themselves of minerals and I vitamins. See. And so they were giving themselves all sorts of different kidney problems and literally starving themselves to death 
because they they were having a really high protein diet. So if you want to lose some weight, <laughs> just yeah, eat rabbits. Just eat rabbits, <laughs> and there you go. But that was the thing. But it's called rabbit starvation. But and now we know. Now we know. But um, yeah, so it was really good to see that this rabbit warren was there, and it's a live warren in the castle. Yes. So they've got all the rabbits that are just doing what they do, would have done do their own from thing. centuries ago. Yeah, they would have done what we were witnessing, just having a rabbit warren. And, mm bouncing in and out and around about the place. So what were some of the main parts of that kind of main area? Because I know that we had a lot of fun with like the stocks. Yeah, there's uh, a few stocks about the UK. Yeah, because you had yeah, you had the, the punishment pits, didn't you, where people <laughs> people were chucked into a pit. Pits and skeletons. And skeletons. There was also so, another yeah. uh, did you go in that building because these are all wooden built buildings, so wooden structures with thatched roofs. Mm-hmm. So you, it builds up this this kind of idea of what it looks like. So these fantastic thatched roof buildings, all handmade. And there was one where somebody was being tortured in one of the... Yeah, of them. yeah, over yeah. like a... He was on like a, a wheel or something. Yeah, the de- like a death wheel. Yeah, uh, and it was because, you know, if you'd been caught hunting... Um, yeah, the... They had a bit of a recording about it that you can you have sure. like hands and stuff cut off. I'm not sure if they were like triggered by when you walked in but it seemed like if you walked into one it would kind of trigger the the, the, the audio, audio to play mm-hmm. i'm not sure if maybe it was just on a loop or something i think i think it was motion sensors yeah that would make sense because every time we walked in and there was no one else in there it would kind of start the thing, start which, the which, thing. which i thought was quite cool because you could walk in have a look around mm. and then hear a little bit more about what yeah because it was a lot a lot of mannequins in all these different kind of and I, th- I think they were very well presented as Definitely, well. Definitely, yes. yeah. yeah. Some of them are a bit you know, iffy sometimes, but they were well I like, presented. I like the one with the, the arrow sticking out of him. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the guy washing his hands of blood, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, was that in the... N- uh, nice, wholesome one. Was that like in the barber surgeon? Sort of yeah. That was kind of out towards the back right. sort of area. Oh, I must have missed mm. that. Um, but, yeah, so you've got, you've got all these areas, and we just happened to come in at the point where you had the uh, stocks mm-hmm. and you also had the... The cage. Oh, I did. I did go yeah, in the cage. You had to go in the cage and get hung you from did, a tree. You have got photos, photo yeah. evidence. Well, of that well I didn't get cage. hung from a tree, but no. I did go in the cage. I think there was one hung, hanging from a tree, wasn't there? Yes, a mannequin. Yeah, yeah there was a mannequin in it. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, but yeah, so you got all the kind of like all the different trades that mm. you needed. It was to very have, representative. You know, because you had the the uh, say we've already mentioned the the, the log uh, and, and the plank splitters, and you had the blacksmiths, which was again great to see because all these things were all set out, and they had fantastic displays and That's all it, the tools, yeah. mm. and, and they had a fire going as well, didn't they? Yeah. In the main the main area, they mm. had a fire that was ticking over, which gives you that wonderful smell. You you came and you went ah reenactment. <laughs> yes, that was the first thing I said when when yes. I first stepped into kind of. The area because was the smell. that that smoky fire smell. It really puts a, a, a living. It, it triggered a memory yeah. of like going to reenactment events, which, funnily enough, we're actually going to. Yeah, so we have got Tewkesbury Medieval Festival. We go off to a weekend. podcast on that. And uh, yeah, so the the displays were super mm. super great. Mm. And to a degree, there was a lot to kind of interact with as well. With like in front of the blacksmiths, he had lots of helmets that me and Jack. We oh were yeah, kind of, we were them. taking lots of selfies, trying on all the different like mm. chainmail and things like that. Oh yeah, because they yeah, they're chainmail bits. Yeah. In fact, it's not actually called chainmail. That's a Victorian term. Oh okay. It just just be called mail. Oh. Now we know. Now we know. Or if you were Vikings, it would be Odin's web. I quite yeah. like that one. Yeah, Odin's web to protect you. Um, so, but you're talking about the interactive parts of of the mm. Mount Fidget. I think that was great. I mean, we didn't do this. Well, I didn't do this, but I know it's you guys did in a kind of a way. If you've got kids, they have this kind of treasure hunt for the different stamps. Oh, yeah, the stamps. Oh, I remember so, the so stamps, So you've got, like, yeah. these stamp points. and like, some of littered them, around, yeah, yeah. And they were, like, up the towers in the Palisade mm, Wall. So just to make sure you mm. would visit all of the different things, you, you which got, was really nice. I suppose, what, did you, did you see anybody doing it? Mm. The reason I noticed you were doing it because you had stamps all up your arm. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. I did want to put one on my forehead. Oh, right. yeah, so <laughs> but I, didn't I, go that I, far. I presume you must get some kind of like booklet mm. that you got to find all the places on the stamp. Now you squares. say that there was in, that, the, in the toy yeah. museum there was a similar thing. There like was a, a similar thing in the like toy a museum, bingo yeah. type thing where it gave you like a, a grid of loads of the artifacts in the toy museum and you mm. could you had to go and find as you go like around a treasure hunt. Yeah, oh, which was nice right. that's great for the kids mm. i did like the i, I noticed the stamp thing in mount fidget and i just thought yeah that was great for the kids recounting yeah. that i think i may have done that on the first time i went as yeah. a small kid 
it's one kid. Oh, right, okay, okay. But that, that is really good. So anybody with kids out there, you know, that 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 kept the kids really busy doing. Yeah, trying yeah to it's, find out. it's a treasure hunt. And you also treasure had a, a lot of interactive stuff within the castle grounds as well, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, like sort of mini game type things. Yeah, because yeah. you had trebuchets. Yeah. yeah, you had the um, that kind of jousting horse. Do you remember oh, yeah. that? Jousting, I, <laughs> I did have a quite a hilarious photo on that. That was the thing. I was I, I was charging off. Yeah, because yeah. You, you guys were doing your own thing. Well, I was going to say, it's it's quite a vast area. It and is. there was times where me and Zach would wander around and not see anyone else. Because, mm. I mean, it was a Saturday as well. I'd, I'd expect it to be possibly packed. be a And I mean, do you remember when we went up to that kind of high kind of lookout point? Yeah. And you could literally just look across, like, almost the entire area. And here's a, here's a yeah. clip. That's all, <laughs> all you could see mm. was just this yeah. fantastic Castle, landscape. Encampment, yeah. Mm. As I say, just like it was out in the movies. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, it would be a really good set, actually. For it that. would be a really good set. And if, we, about, if we had the budget. I was talk, talking about that. Well, okay, so you know, uh, obviously, we're filming Hartsfeld and the Identity Stealer, yep. which is a, is a fantasy, in, indie, independent film. Um, and it's Very set. low budget. But, but micro budget, yes, it's set set in the Anglo-Saxon stroke Viking period. If you want to listen to a podcast about filmmaking on a micro budget, yeah, yes, <laughs> we have done one. You're in the right place. One. Go go and find it. But the reason for me, I was looking around, and it was two things. One, I was taking the advantage of looking at all the different set pieces they'd done there, mm. and, and looking at how I get ideas for set dressing the village that we've been building. Yeah. But that was the thing. We've actually built a small Anglo-Saxon village mm-hmm. for the film because of that reason. We yeah. wanted to go and hire out somewhere like Mount Fitchett to use mm-hmm. it as an actual as a base film location. Yeah, don't have the budget for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's not. another village. It uh, would have been lovely. There's another village Amazing. called Westo, which is another another similar type village. That would have been absolutely fantastic. But, but don't have the budget for it, so. Being me, <laughs> be, be, being being the Holland family as we are, yes, it's like okay. If we build build it, they will come. come. They will come. So, <laughs> right, so and Jack was been helping us over the past year, and we've built this this Anglo Saxon village, village, and it looks fantastic. And there's still a few bits and pieces just to do it, but mostly we're getting ready to set dress it for the filming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, that was the point. You say it was a film set, and Jack, you said it would be fantastic as a film set. Yes. Yeah, we, we had at one point thought about using that as a film set, but we just don't have the budget for it. But it is just so fantastic. I mean, mm-hmm. as you get up one of those towers and look over the whole place, yeah, you, know, you can just imagine people walking mm. about there. Doing I wonder it. if they do they do any reenactment events there. I don't think I've been there when I've seen anybody doing any. Because that would have been really cool. That would have been something I would have said as possible improvement. Not improvement, but just a nice thing would be to, maybe to have, have somebody like an interactive kind of villagers walking around, kind of giving you information. But I suppose the mannequins do that; yeah, they don't I mean, walk around. But you know, <laughs> maybe they do. Uh, have to have a look at their website, but maybe they do have events and events things. and things. Yeah. There oh, well, I'll just put a link in the description to the website. Otherwise, yeah. we'll yeah. just have to get dressed up in our Anglo-Saxon stroke Viking gear and just go turf, back turf up, turf <laughs> up there one day. I mean, we'll wait for the toy museum to have a re a re kind of rejig. Yeah. And then we'll and go then back. We can wander around Mount Fitchett and people will begin to say, oh, just, can we have your photograph? <laughs> of course you can. Of course you can. It's five pounds, please. Five pounds. That's it. <laughs> five pounds? Ten, Ten pounds. Pay for our we're, we're also <laughs> doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be involved. Um, so, yeah, so we've got these wonderful, wonderful interactive things. But we had, they kind of, I say, they had treblages, they had uh, kind of um, all sorts of different sort of, I, I know there was at least three different, Firing ranges that you could yeah, it was like yeah. a tennis ball catapult type thing. Yeah, uh, which kind of was that to kind of represent the trebuchet at all? Kind of, it was like a slingshot. It kept firing yeah. off to the left. I found. Yeah, mm. it didn't really have much of an aim. It was no. for the kids though. It was, it was quite fun. fun the kids, oh yeah, but that's course. what I'm saying. It's more again more fun for the kids. There was also a uh, kind of bit we stumbled across right at sort of the back corner. Which, which was like a medieval herb garden. Oh, yes. Which was quite a nice, like, kind of yes. miniature herb garden, which all sorts of it different had, like, plants. had, like, old herbs and stuff. There was lots of old information. <laughs> lots of information on the plants yeah. that were there and a nice seating area, which was quite Yeah, cool. it was quite cool because it was so kind was of that, under trees. Was that over by the main manor? 
Yes, yes kind of by yes. the yeah the back corner. Because you had that section where you got the main manor house, uh, again a thatched building which had a tower on it, tower mm. room, which is where the the baron himself slept in his mm. in his room, um, and the, the inside there that was set out with a big banqueting table. Mm. And, it was uh, very grand in there. Very very good. Yeah, really lovely to see that. And then they got a new section in the wall, which was kind of outside Mount Fidget. Uh, palisade, which was, was meant to represent a siege tower. Yeah, so I got that. If it was under attack, what it would be like for the attackers yeah. to be building a siege tower and rolling it up. It was it was nice to to kind of see that and go through that because yeah. I again, don't remember that, that from the first time. That was, that was relatively, it was definitely you know, relatively new. Yeah. With that as well, there was a, a kind of audio kind of trigger as well that kind of told you a little bit more about it as you walked through, which mm. was quite cool. Yeah. And again, it had lots of these like helmets and bits and bobs scattered around that you could pick up, yeah. put on. Yeah. I think there was some swords you could ha- sort of half pull out of the yeah. scabbards. Yeah, I yeah. think that was kind of just to gauge the weight of them. And, and, and that was the thing. I think it was kind of in that lower down section near the trebuchet. Wasn't there some pels in the ground with some sticks? <laughs> there were some they pels. Ta- they were touted very... as like training posts. They were very mm. short pels. Now, yeah. I know, I think, didn't they have a, a measure, a height measure? At some point, oh, yeah, that was kind of heights of people. That was down the, the bottom towards, towards the, the hill. Exit, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but even so, compared to that, although the people at the time were meant to be shorter than on average to what we are now, mm. those pelts were very short. Yeah, and the if this put it this way, if they were meant to be representative of the Normans and the Anglo Saxons when the Norman invasion in 1066 came, it'd be like. Us fighting munchkins. Well, according, <laughs> according to the according to the height measure thing, the Viking warriors only like four foot tall. Anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure how accurate. I, that I think is. they I think they got that a bit wonky. Yeah, it was it. Yeah. It was a, It'd be like, yeah. Quickly get the time machine out. We'll nip back to 1066 <laughs> again. Kicking all the munchkins. It, it, it was it was near that kind Quick, of. Get the bell. <laughs> It was near that the, the bow of that kind of ship, wasn't yeah, it? Because yeah, yeah. they had like a, a little kind of ship, ship seat area, didn't they? Yes, where you did a little uh, Beowulf reenactment. She is my mother. I will not go back to her murky womb. And there you go. That's a Beowulf. Reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very Impromptu. specific. Very specific reference there. Yeah, that was. Um, yeah, and, and it's just, just fantastic all round, you know. Um, yeah, I had an absolutely brilliant day. Mount Fidget Castle with all the... Ins- it, 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 just the interactive stuff and, and just mm, the smell. There smells. was so much to see. The immersion, so... I think, was... There was yeah, times I, where you could just be kind of lost in what was happening I around think, yeah. I think I've, There was I, so much to see, so much you to know, see. I, because I've gone to an awful lot of what people would consider castle castles and you go through the castles and some of them can be just literally ruins others can be in reasonably sort of preserved conditions some of them can be still lived in castles but Mm. um, even the when you get to those stone castles that are in half decent conditions it just tends to be well managed ruins but they don't have in general I you know having that the the amount of stuff that's at Mount Fidget Mm. where they've got all those sort of interactive displays of yeah. daily life. I'd say you could get lost there. You could easily w- wander around there two or three times on any one occasion. And and as a family, you could take a picnic. Take yes. a picnic and literally yeah, make the day of it because there's plenty of space to yeah. sit down. So many benches picnic. and things to do that. You guys found a mine, if I recall. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Good grief, yeah. It was kind of just more of a wooden hole. tunnel. Was it even, even really was a it, hole? Was it meant to represent... Mining underneath. I the, believe it was. Yes. Underneath the castles. I think we defenses. realized we realized sort of towards the end of the tunnel that we, it probably was more for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a small and it confined was quite, space. Yeah, mm. quite cramped. But uh, yeah, well, anyway, you got in there and got out again. Just, yeah. just, just about. <laughs> it was very. And dark. I also have footage of that. Okay, I'm coming in. <laughs> oh, hello, Zach. Hey. Ugh. We're going into the mine. How far does this go? Oh my god, there's something down here. Ah! Oh Christ. Oh, that's on my back. Uh, Welcome to my secret den. Oh, is this it? I hope so. Oh Christ, we fell down. Okay, we found ourselves stuck in a mine. The mines of Moria. Let me try and get out. Christ. Very tight down here. Okay, I'm going. 
go. Oh, I shut my back on the wall. This is not the best <laughs> way of doing this. Oh. Hello. Oh. I see daylight. Oh, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> We made it. We're alive. So what would you say stands out as like your, you know, the, the wow, main... wow factors of, of going there? Now, are we talking the whole experience, including the toy museum, or just Mount Fitchett? Uh, I think since this episode is about Mount Fitchett Castle, we'll just stick with Mount Fitchett Castle. I mean, there was actually, a, what I forgot, is they've got that grinder for the corn. Oh, um, I remember that. Yeah. Yes, because um, I remember somewhere, somewhere I've got a photograph of you as a as a little toddler. Yes, it was like on the it's Conan the Wheel of Pain, you know. And, then <laughs> and we did recreate that. We recreated it. Got a picture. Oh, and that brings up a memory. Don't you remember that? I think the reason we went there initially as a kid was to kind of make a school project. Yes, you did a school project. We all about Anglo-Saxon. Put some life. pictures and stuff together on this massive kind of cardboard. Yeah, it was a display. Frame, yeah. Display for and one of your and I school got project. Top top marks on that, so I was yeah, pretty happy yeah. about that. There you go. So anyway, back to my question though. Within Mount Fidget Castle, what's what's your highlights that stand out? Hmm. Mm. I'd probably say I really quite enjoyed the very first bit we went to the dark sort of the dark side of medieval castles i think they mm. mentioned in the with all the pits and things the pits and, <laughs> yeah and the skeleton um i like seeing the animals kind of that added to the yes sort of immersion yeah the live animals was great yeah, yeah. i like the cage you like being in the cage <laughs> that says more about you than we should <laughs> yeah that's, that's going down the wrong wrong <laughs> Probably oh, no, the, the the interactive parts, like the all the stocks everywhere. I think because I, I and the helmets. To my and stuff memory, really I, I don't really have any memory. I've possibly been there as a kid. I'm not sure, but um, just being able to explore it and not really know much about it beforehand, and mm. just sort of see how far it goes. And yeah, because you were you were fixed to no kind of time frame or anything. It wasn't like an allocated like hour or something to yeah. see the entire thing. It was just. You've paid for the experience. You can spend the entire day there yeah. as long as you want. And similar to the toy museum, I'm sure you could probably go back and see things again that you probably didn't. Well, as 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 we say, the example of that would be the siege tower. That mm. wasn't there the first time we went, mm. and now, ooh, we've gone back. There's a siege tower. There's a siege tower. Even even all the audio clips yeah. and things that you probably don't get a chance to listen to. Every single one of them, you could go around mm. and. Yeah. Listen to those and get more yeah. insight. Too. I mean, I love the whole thing. Uh, I took yeah. so many photos, which are going to be... You know, <laughs> You'll see throughout this episode. Yeah. Yes. But they were just, just brilliant for research. But but I, I too, it's nothing in particular, one thing, but what I liked about it was, that, did you know how, how many sort of little nooks and crannies there were, little passageways and staircases and lookout points and things you could find to yeah. climb up and go up and down and yeah and it was just like mm. lots of places the, the exploration side that you things, could explore yeah. yeah and you're up a tower and then you down a tower down, and you yeah. find yeah. another tower and it's just like there's just so many places you could like so many kids would like, just have a whale of a time mm. like intricate things like there was a, there was a, a stretch rack yeah yeah stretch that, rack. that we, that we, we the found rack. <laughs> yeah put him on the rack <laughs> um and again, they had they had that toilet you sat on, and we took some rather hilarious photos. Photos of me sitting on the loop. Q one now. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing my underpants <laughs> for the first one, <laughs> the first picture. We won't see the other. Maybe, picture. maybe for the OnlyFans exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, they got loads. Of, it was just like crazy. You, you, good fun. I, good from fun. Listening to what you guys said, I think I missed a couple of bits myself now because I don't yeah. remember a guy well, with an arrow sticking out. We, we, we yeah, said yeah. the same thing about. The toy museum. There was so much to see. Mm. Yeah, all in all, I think I don't know what it was. Uh, you have to look at the website, listeners, to uh, find like a family ticket price. Mm-hmm. But, I, that was my next question. What do you think it was worth the well, price? Sixteen paid? pounds for the people out there that are looking to right. visit. Mm-hmm. It was sixteen pounds for an adult. Mm-hmm. So full adult, sixteen pounds. I'm thinking even if you split that down the middle and said it was eight pounds for the toy museum, eight pounds for Mount Fitchett Castle. I actually think that's a really good price. Yeah, I mean, and we made get? a lot of we we got a lot of sort of time out of it as well. What yeah. do you get for, for for that money these days? I mean, sixteen pounds. Um, the experience alone, just seeing it all, photo opportunities and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the photo opportunities, brilliant. and then again with the photo, it wasn't that busy when we went, no. which meant I got loads of photographs that had no members of the public in mm, it. At yeah, all. there's a there's a good picture I got of you stand when we were up one of the towers. Yeah, I got a picture of Buzz standing 
in front of one of the structures and it's just there's no one else to be just, seen just to give it a it's sense of scale yeah. lording it yeah. up <laughs> lording it up at my manor <laughs> that's, that's what goes to show that it was quite it might have been busy in quotations yeah. I mean there but, were people around don't yeah, get me but, wrong but it, they were spread out because it's such a wide space where you can explore all sorts mm, of different yeah. things everyone was very at much at your own out. leisure which was yeah. really nice yeah, yeah. I, I would say if you're going to go there plan obviously you've got to you're going to get the ticket and the ticket's going to get you access to both yeah, um, uh, both of them. Do areas. not skip out on the toy museum. Yeah, don't skip out. It, on the toy it's museum. definitely worth it. Uh, if you if your mind is I'm going to go and see Mount Fidget Castle and you've not thought about the toy museum, definitely, definitely go to the toy Seize museum. Seize the opportunity. Mm. If you're going to go to the toy museum and you don't thought about the castle, then I say exactly the same. Mm. Um, together, I think they are both so different, but at the same time, there is just so much. Yeah. So, pack a picnic. And make a good, and I mean a good, a good day, day of it. Yeah. Don't don't turn up don't after rush. lunch. Don't rush. Don't rush. Don't turn up after lunch. Make a day of it, and you won't be sorry. Take your time. I, Take your time. And again, I think if it was raining, because we had a really nice day, didn't we? We did. Mm. Yeah, it was a very nice sun. But if it was raining in the toy museum, apart from the dinosaur bits outside, you're indoors. Mm-hmm. And also with Mount Fitch Castle, although the encampment stretches out over a wide area, mm-hmm. there are so many areas that you can get out of the Take way. Take shelter, yeah. You know, so you, you, that wouldn't even be a, an issue. And there's plenty of... Uh, if you're going to take a picnic and say it was pouring down with rain, so you're not going to lay out on the grass and just have a picnic, down near the exit, there was plenty of covered table areas and stuff mm, as well. Yeah. Mm. You know. And they've got a cafe there. And just to, to yeah, round okay. off the day, we, we got an ice cream as well. Yeah, we got an ice cream at the cafe. It, it was a bit melty. <laughs> I'm go, not going to lie. It was a hot day. It was a very hot day. <laughs> it was a hot day. But yeah, we had a... a and there was another pheasant. Another pheasant. Peacock. <laughs> another <there>. peacock. <laughs> which uh, yeah. Zach failed to make friends with, unfortunately. Yeah. I think you tried creeping up on I, I did do it. We, we did get a, a rather <laughs> hilarious clip of that. Yeah, you're trying to sneak up on the... Or just make friends. <laughs> Maybe take a selfie, you know. Take a selfie with Peacock. <laughs> but it, it wanted none of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, yeah, so and they had got some lovely fallow deer there as well. Yeah, I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, which uh, I got a photograph of. So Did you? Did you get a good, good picture? Cue photo of fallow deer. Because when we initially went there, they were there and we saw them and we looked to yeah, people were feeding and see them, them. Weren't they? but when we actually turned up to see them they'd kind yeah, of they'd gone and hidden away off into the forest yes yeah because there's a bit of woodland around the side of the castle area yeah hmm. so overall it was a splendid day out it was a fantastic day out and well yes. worth going over to Mount Fidget Castle and the House of the Hill Toy Museum uh, over near to Stansted Airport yes so if you are within the f- uh, a decent distance mm-hmm. I would definitely recommend visiting yes. i think i did mention it to somebody at work and they are planning a trip there nice which is well, quite fun hopefully you can persuade them to listen to this podcast oh yeah and if they watch it on youtube they can see some of the uh, footage and videos that said i think they are a bit annoyed with me that i'm having next weekend off <laughs> because they wanted to go to a brazilian uh, party um like thing they're down brazilian in part- they were going to a party where they all got brazilians no 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 <laughs> like, 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 a, like a <laughs> like a, a parade <laughs> in london somewhere. oh you mean uh, like a mardi gras a fiesta. A fiesta yeah something like that like uh, i think it's next sunday but oh, um right. well, you, sorry you've got to go to battle of tewkesbury sorry tewkesbury and poke some uh, lancastrians yeah with your pole arm <laughs> do um <laughs> does the castle or the surrounding sort of attraction have any sort of form of social media or websites that we can direct people to uh i think so but Just to get some more information yeah i'll literally i'll put a link in the description yeah, yeah. the castle itself mount Fidget castle has got its own website so yeah they can get all the details from there nice okay so to round off this spectacular episode the it's two, time for two-parter two-parter the two-parter um it is time for you guessed it Quote of the week. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. Are we doing the song? Quote of the week. Quote of the week. It needs a jingle. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. Anyway, quote of the week is something. Who? Who? So does somebody have a quote? Well, I don't actually know this. So I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump in because I, being that it's Mount Fitchett, Anglo-Saxon, I thought I'd go for an Anglo-Saxon quote. Fair enough. You're going to read it in on in Old English. No. Oh. No. Well, I'm going to read it in English. Let's put it that way. And I am old. <laughs> so kind of <laughs> old English, yeah. Okay, so my quote is, there is no greater will on earth than the will to survive. And that's Ooh. 
Anglo-Saxon quote. And if you need any podcasts on survival techniques, oh, you're in the right place. Don't, right don't, place. don't tempt us. Don't <laughs> tempt us. I like Everybody that. else, come on. Who's Will? Yeah. Is yeah. everybody else going to... Well, that's the thing. You keep mentioning Roger when we use radio mics and yeah. things. And, like, you go Roger, Roger. And Roger, like, Roger. I always go copy and things. So. Copy. Roger. Should we um, give the audience a sort of teaser as to what to expect from the next sort of few episodes, maybe? Ooh. What have we got planned coming up? Well, we've got some stonking things coming up. This I is true, but the... I don't quite know exactly which order they're going to come out in. I don't in. know which order they're going to come out in, but I know that there's one that we've kind of discussed a bit about, and that's going to be on the to- topic of robotics. Yeah. So we're going from the the past to the future. <laughs> to the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot to talk about robotics at this present moment in time. We did an AI podcast yes, already. Yes, and that was very, very popular. And the AI, obviously, is all part of the expanding universe of robotics. And robot of. Is, it comes from the Slavic term, slave. Slave. And of <laughs> call back to the world's call end. Back to the world's <laughs> end episode. Okay. This episode is just full of callbacks. So we, we are going to be doing an episode on robotics, yes. I, I do then. love the fact that we've got to that point of like <laughs> podcast saturation that we can reference our own podcasts. <laughs> yeah. And we've got, uh, we want to get Glenn back in for some more cryptozoology. I know he wants to do yeah. the Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and Mothman. Man. And I want to do the Rake. The Rake. What's that? Ooh, well, I guess we'll, well find, we'll out. find we'll out. out. It's a little teaser for you there. Spoilers. Mm. Uh, we want to go on a live uh, ghost hunt with uh, Mickey. Yeah, looking yeah, that would be fun. And, uh, and we've got so much more because we've got loads of prepping ones to do. And, things. and so. if there's any subjects that you guys would like please, us to cover, yeah. maybe, please uh, get comment in below. contact, comment below. We're um, happy to cover most topic mo- within, mo- within, mo- within, within reason, reason yeah. most things. <laughs> about, so we're also overdue to, to re, uh, get revisit the super fans as well. Oh so. yeah, yes. we, we've kind of got in contact with a lot more kind of Doctor yeah. Who Any super people. fans out there? But I'm still yeah. looking for a dinosaur expert. Yes. I need uh, a dinosaur. Uh, uh, anyone, if you are a dinosaur. Oh my god, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> uh, on that note, I think we should. Can we visit uh, Jurassic Park? It's too hot in here. We've all gone crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think we should leave, leave it there. Yeah, because that's that's basically going to be if we ever cover dinosaurs, we're just going to talk about Jurassic Park. <laughs> Probably. Because <laughs> that's our, that's the extent of our knowledge. <laughs> well, that's what I need. To, see, that's one of the questions. I need a dinosaur expert to say, is Jurassic Park a good, you know, representation rep- of, of real dinosaurs? Well, apparently the one that goes. Psh- the, 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 I'm the sorry for the, for the audio yeah. listeners Saurus, can't yeah. see my action. <laughs> yeah, he's kind apparently of. Apparently, that does. It's, that's actually very small, not as big as it is in the film, oh, okay. and they don't spit. And that thing's a fake. So it doesn't. So what, okay, so what, but my question would be to, uh, to a dinosaur <laughs> expert: How would you know? It let's just do dinosaur podcast now. No, no, <laughs> no, no, three no, parts. No, anyway, <laughs> no, no, no. We're okay, gonna, we're so gonna, we've got a lot, lot to come. We're going to draw it to a close there. Lot to do, lot to do. But for now, I think it's time to say our farewells for this week. Well, that sounded quite sombre. <laughs> if you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below any suggestions of topics or activities you'd like to listen to in future episodes. That's a uh, goatee PTSD goodbye God. from Zach. Oh <laughs> That's a rusty helmet goodbye from Jack. Uh, and a Viking goodbye from Buzz, because I don't know what Anglo-Saxons would have shouted. But there you go. Goodbye. You can find the Now We Know Show podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music and Apple Podcasts. Check out the Zach Wild Productions social media pages on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or visit the Zach Wild Productions website at www.zachwildproductions.com. Please get in contact, we'd love to find out how you're listening to us. So get in touch in the comments and don't forget to check out Zach Wild Productions on Patreon to become an official ZWP patron today. (laughs) 